even before hearing it, I look at the waveforms and I look at similarities. A lot of what happens here is the more you hear it, the worse it gets, okay? So keep your listening minimal so you don't lose what the song is about. So we look at the files, look at how we can park them, and look at how we can make the vertical challenge. To me, the vertical challenge is when I'm done, I wanna look off the roof and not be really scared when I see the ground. Then when I scroll up and down the screen, it's like, wow, this is a lead vocal, some stereo backgrounds. In this scenario, we might even do some commit comps, which makes it so my vertical screen isn't the World Trade Center. It's more like, wow, if it's 20 stories, I can see it. If your session is the tallest building in the world vertically, then it's really hard to navigate. If there's situations where you can make some comps that are kind of indestructible, huh? then it makes more sense when you're trying to navigate the session. If you have 100 tracks of backgrounds that are gonna be a stereo pair, well, let's just make it a stereo pair and get rid of those 100 floors, okay? So I kind of look at this vertical session as a building. And taller is not better. The shorter you can make it is better. So if I can make it to be like 40 faders, even better. So here's our vocals. We look at that, okay. Nick will color them our color code. For me, I want to make it so, okay, the lead vocals, we put those first and then we line up the backgrounds in order of how often they sing. And line them all up and I like blue for vocals. Blue for vocals, green for guitars, red for drums, purple for bass. There might be a few shades in between so you can differentiate if you have a lot of stuff. I leave it up to you. You can all have your own colors. There's a bunch of colors up there so I just try to pick the basic color so it's easy to spot. And once you've done 10, 20, 100 songs in a certain color scheme, it's easy to know that anything green is a guitar, anything red's a is drums, and anything purple's bass. So have I perfected it? No. Do I get into all the shading? You know, it can get confusing. So I'd rather have less is more. So Nick is just moving all the keyboards above the vocals. And we'll see what we have to do to comp any of that. So then we have the vocals, right? I see a lot of backgrounds. Let's scroll down, there's our synth pile. Then it looks like we have chorus vocal, verse vocal with no overlaps, right? And a, the double, right? So it kind of looks like a double thing and a bridge. And then we have the BV stack. Let's scroll down there. And then we have some guitars, okay. And then we have, we have chorus, Tasty, isn't that nice? Then we have kick drum, snare sample. Then we will make the drums how we like them, right? Bass drum in, bass drum out. BD par, like John par, kick sample. We'll start by organizing our drums. The way they have it laid out is different than how I want to have it laid out. Let's just make kick sample and then snare top. So we're just, we're going to organize the drums and do it kind of like I normally do. So kick sample, snare top, and then the toms. They got some three toms and a whole party of toms. We'll put those there and then we'll look for overheads. They got them in there. And we have overheads and then we'll put the room tracks. I'm gonna organize the drums the way I like to see them. I'm so used to having them a certain way Kick, snare, toms, overheads, room. Then from that point, it's like a, it's, it could be some samples or hi hat ride. Then we start spreading out the extra stuff to just go through. And then if it's stuff, if it's tracks we're not going to use, hide and make inactive. So we're going from here down to as much as we can, right? We're going to take the keyboards that look like they could work together. This is without hearing it. It looks like the first three pairs up top will go to nine and ten and we send those to an aux, because we may treat them the same. And if we do, and if they work, guess what they become? A pair. In a perfect world, we could pair this thing down where you could almost walk off the top floor. If you look at it, only comp here, right, is this rip synth and this bridge synth. Let's just start by outputting them to nine and 10 and the ones below 11 and 12. 
and we'll do, do the same thing for that next batch because it looks like Rip and Bridge look like they could go in with the 9 and 10 pack. Part of what you're doing is you're taking puzzle pieces and you're looking at waveforms and if it says keyboard, you're saying, okay, if this plays here and that plays there and this plays here, if there's no hand, if there's no overlap, right? Then let me just park them all together, okay? So if, if none of it overlaps, we can output it to the same pair. And then if there's sonic changes, we, we can do it internally, right? So visually, it looks like these guys will work, right? And then maybe Nick, just for a visual, we just see the thing that says bridge synth, make it just the region for the bridge, right? And not that, there you go. Love that. And even the rip synth, you could get it out of the bridge so we know it's only playing that section. I think you're getting this part of the conversation. Oh,